Okay, so where were we? <clears throat> uh, where we had got to? Uh, we had uh, got to the point uh, where we got the two machines starting up. We converted our vagrant file to something a bit more data driven. Uh, and we're now looking at the way we can uh, kick off the automation of accepting the keys and doing some uh, starting off some of the orchestration. Uh, so perhaps what we should do now <clears throat> is just think about this. The simplest uh, way to do this is to ignore the data structures we've got so far in this file here. Um, so this, this this file down here, uh, we've got we've got the data data structures which describe the servers. Um, what we're talking about now is something that describes how to kick off the orchestration. And basically, what we want is we want a file with uh, potentially two elements for each uh, on each line uh, or each record we want a list of the servers that need to be ready or more accurately a list of minions that need to be ready uh, and on the other side we need a list of orchestrations probably only one orchestration state is needed but a list of orchestration states that we want to trigger so the process would be uh, verify that the list uh, of uh, minions on the left was available and when it was available loop through the list on the right the list of orchestrations and basically kick them off so it's a fairly simple requirement um, and it also means that uh, it would, but it doesn't solve the first problem which is how to make sure that all of the minions as specified in the aforementioned file down here uh, have all been accepted because uh, not all of these machines might be involved with the initial orchestration calls so uh, we've actually got two-step process to deal with one is the acceptance of each of the minions uh, and the other is the orchestration kicking off <clears throat> okay so if we look at um, how orchestration works <clears throat> Uh, let's go to actually let's get rid of this because we don't need all this stuff about grub anymore. Uh, so what we need is we need to look in here uh, for orchestration uh, and uh, it's hardly an auspicious start is it? Let's try uh, reloading that right so uh, I don't want that orchestration runner is what we want now why is it honestly this is very strange Now, why is it trying to download it? Oh, that's very strange, isn't it? Okay, well, let's go to... Yeah, copy the link address. Hello. Uh, there's something odd going on with my... Hmm. 
Okay, that was a bit weird. Right, okay, anyway, orchestration runner, which is what we're interested in. So you can see here that what we do is on sort master, we're running the orchestration state and then we're giving it the state that we want it to run. Now within that state, we've got, for example, the targeted uh, minions, okay, and then we've got the thing that we want to run, uh, which is the salt function. Uh, so, for example, uh, file copy and any arguments that need to go to it. Right, so that's all very simple enough. Uh, And we can actually use specialized high states and all sorts of funky stuff if you want to. But so the, the lesson to take away from this is that we don't need to do anything special about uh, the mapping uh, of minions to orchestrations, really, because once all of the minions have been accepted, the mapping is taken care of here when we specify the target of our orchestration states. So that's cool. Uh, so what well, all we need to do now is uh, make sure that all of the minions are available. Now, uh, I mean, looking into the future, uh, we want to make sure that the list of targets uh, is available. Mm, yeah, we don't want to overcomplicate it. Let, let, let's not overcomplicate anything. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, enhance main. And what it needs to do is it needs to figure out uh, by looking at the data in here, uh, it needs to figure out, for example, for each of the servers, it needs the server name and it needs the domain. Uh, and using that, it can construct all of the expected minion IDs, which are basically the fully qualified domain names in our system. Uh, and then it can read those. Now, Bash, bless its soul, uh, is not particularly great uh, at doing this sort of thing. We could do it. But it might be like pulling teeth so it's probably better to use something else and python is the first thing that springs to mind because we've got a json library which means we can read our json data we know it's already going to be installed because if the salt minions are installed then so is python uh, so all we need to do is write a fairly simple script. Uh, so there's a couple of things I need to check. Uh, first of all, uh, Python merge dictionaries. Uh, add my merge to dictionaries. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, and Python three or better. Um, Uh, that looks more or less like what we want. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, we need the Python JSON library. Now, is that one that we can expect to be within installed already? Probably, because again, salt requires it. Um, so the, uh, it's a Python standard library. Nice! <clears throat> okay, so as long as we've got a fairly recent version of Python, we should be golden. Uh, and given that we're installing it now, uh, it's pretty safe to say that we're going to be 3.5 or greater. Uh, we can verify that in a minute. Uh, so all we need then is we need to read in the JSON file, uh, specifically uh, master servers .json. then we need to construct all of the minion IDs which really is a question of taking the servers and for each server 
we need to merge the server defaults with whatever the server data is then we need to take the key which is the server host name add it to the domain to get the minion id having got the list of minion ids or, or, or not even got the list i mean we could we could just do it as we find them uh, so we then do the bit about checking that the minion uh, is secure now we could do this two ways we could either use the existing acceptance script and actually just have the python produce the output to stand it out for example uh, listing the minion IDs I was wondering whether there's a way to do it with JQ uh, now uh, actually let's have a look whether there's a way to do it with JQ JQ uh, is there a way to merge dictionaries with JQ? Right, 614 is now possible with a star operator. When given two objects, it will merge them recursively. Okay, so can we do that with the master data? So, first of all, we need to make sure we can. So, JQ, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, quotes. Right, so we want uh, dot server. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Uh, server defaults. Right, that should get us. Mm, oh, mm. Provision is master service. Count index array with string server defaults. Uh, okay. Mm. Do you just. Stupidity on my part. I don't want to. Okay, uh, that's more like what I was expecting. Now then, just for the sake of argument, let's do uh, dot server servers dot sr. Okay, so
now does that give us the priority i was expecting difficult to know because of course there's no oh salt dots yeah so that gives me the priority i was expecting cool okay so that So what I need to do now is get JQ to give me that for my output uh, mm, So I can take that and I'll put that to just for the sake of argument. Something like that. Okay. Now I want it to do that for every Uh, for every member uh, uh, in, 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 in. well actually it is not that that I want is it what I want is SRV dot uh, now then uh, let's just take out that Uh, uh, I will be dot uh, All right, so I just want to output the combined string. Okay. Uh, right, so what I'm doing basic filters. Raw output. If the filters result in a string, then it's written directly to the standard output rather than being formatted. Da, da, da. Right, so let's do that. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out with. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Oh, okay, so it's got to be second. Uh, first of all, uh, Well, that's what I expected. So how do I get it to output a string literal? Reconstruction, object construction, strings are added by being joined to a larger string. So, can I just say uh, something like that? Yep. 
yes I can okay doesn't solve the problem of how I loop across the Mm. Keys in there we get keys built in bunker keys given an object returns its keys as an array. Okay. For any filter x, map x will run that filter for each element of the input array. Ooh, we're getting somewhere. So, uh, the input array in our case will be uh, for each of the keys in dot servers uh, uh, and a map I'm not sure that that's right, but uh. right, so server defaults has to be extracted on level back doesn't it uh, this map will just get dot servers uh, oh, I need to map I need to get the name and the domain Uh, but, uh, no. So this Okay, I can do it in more than one step, can't I? <clears throat> so for each of the servers, Right, so combines two filters by feeding the output of one on the left into the input of the one on the right. Fair enough. Uh, uh, 
an array slash object value iterator we use our dot index in here but omit the index entirely it will return all the elements of an array uh, That looks up. And so, what I want to do is right. So, I can use the in so I can use the keys to get the keys as an array now the problem is I need to feed the keys in effectively as a separate thing don't I hmm. So I can do map values uh, So I can do map values but it requires me to store
All right, man. All right, so. Yeah, we're just a long way around. Guess what? I want to do something like. Right, so you can't multiply uh, but I wasn't trying to multiply them, I was trying to merge them.
And that's because server defaults doesn't exist anymore in the context of this map. Because we've actually selected just the service data. So what I need is some way of getting service default inside here so we can do the merge. Uh, I can probably do it with two JQ commands. After a fashion. Mm. Uh, this is taking too long. Right. Uh, let's do it the easy way. Uh, let's try doing it with Python, shall we? Uh, my brain's really not engaged today. Uh, so let's get rid of you. So, within Python, it's all we got. Three, two, all right, so. And mixed up now, right? Input the JSON, so then we want to do uh, can we just do a JSON load? Mm, we can do it. Uh, Uh, I'm going to do something like oh, I'm going to show my embarrassing Jason now. Uh, so, with provisions. Uh, Thank you. 
Uh, why are you making me low? My tool is shite. Do I really need to do all that? I thought there was a with context manager. Mm. Oh yeah, well, I suppose it does help if you if you actually say with open oh. uh, with open. Path. Tell it what you want. Um, you just need to open it for read. And um, spell uh, that. And of course, come on. Right. And now I can do JSON load um, file. And what do I do with it? Do I? Mm. Mm. I have to actually indent it all.
I think that's the old way of doing it, isn't it? This is... No, this is the old way of doing it, I'm sure. So, we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to do uh, y dot d eight main. Spam. There we go. Hey, what do you know? Simply enough, isn't it? Right, now then, uh, now we don't need to do. Now, the simple way of doing this would be to basically reproduce what I did in the bash script. Uh, but there's got to be a better way of doing it. Well, I'll say there's got to be. Um, now, if I could load the salt key as a library and do it that way, or um, I could just feed those as input to the accept key string, uh, which already exists. Uh, so that's another way of doing it. Or, uh, as I say, I can reproduce uh, So basically, uh, doing Python tests. Uh, so Python test file exists. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, 
There we go, OS path. That seems like the way to go. So that allows me to do that. And then um, uh, I assume there's something like a system call. Uh, hmm. Sub process. Routine there is so much using the module. It's preferable to using this function. Okay. Versions of Python before 35 use call. So basically. Uh, it's easy, isn't it? Uh, so what we have here, so we can say, uh, uh, no I assume I can just do this. Do I have to do? Simply not fair because we just now we have to do the uh, import OS, uh, which is a bit of an overkill, but uh, now we can do OS if OS dot path dot uh, yeah, is for uh, is for open brackets. It is for okay, and it will be slash etc. Slash etc. Salt. PKI. Can't remember the path name. However, we know what it is from here. Master minions. PKI master minions pre. Uh, well, actually, uh, master minion slash whatever's provided here. Uh, so if uh, I suppose if not. Oops, uh, uh, is Python if it doesn't exist, then uh, now then. There's probably a more elegant way of doing this. Uh, on OS dot path. There's going to be a more elegant way of doing this. But 
we're just proving a point here. Okay, that is as shonky as it gets. But broadly, it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, oh, that needs to be an array. Okay.
Uh, once again, I've lost track of oh, the simple one line to get the directory where I am. Uh, I suppose I should be explicit, so it will ultimately be in temp uh, provisioner. Provisioners master, or is it just provisioners? <laughs> Except uh, minion. What are you doing? So, yeah, I do. Just get covered up to provisioners. Cool. Okay. Well, let's suck it in and see. Right, so we're doing a lot of experimenting. Um, I only started mucking around with Python a few weeks ago and I keep jumping in and out of it uh, with other things. So I'm constantly having to look up how to do things. Uh, but that is a small problem. Um, it's one of those things I find that when I'm learning something new, uh, first of all, I, I get bored very easily. <laughs> So I tend to jump in and out of things. Um, and I started messing around with Python uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and I've been dipping in and out of it since. So although it, it clicks back fairly quickly, uh, I do find I still have to look up loads of stuff. Uh, I'm just not familiar enough with it yet. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, the same goes with most things, uh, you know. I think I've got the attitude generally that uh, stuff kind of sticks uh, eventually, uh, but I don't tend to remember stuff deliberately. So you know, I don't. I, uh, what I mean is, um, I don't. I don't go out of my way to remember specifics. I remember concepts. I remember what should be possible and broadly what is possible in any given context. So, you know, within a programming language, you, you expect there to be, you know, conditionals and loops and things like that. Uh, and so you get the general format of these things. Uh, and in Python, for example, uh, there's the concept of these context managers. So you know that you can do with the uh, as you know, whatever. Um, but then, you know, your deceptive brain, if you're not dealing with opening and managing files a lot, uh, 
you forget you know, little details. Uh, so uh, I, I, I refuse to stress out about that kind of thing. It, it can get frustrating, but the thing is, if you're doing it a lot, it, it doesn't take very many repetitions for it to kind of stick. So once I'm in the groove of doing these things, uh, it, it becomes second nature after a while. Uh, now, are there better ways of doing things? Yeah, of course. Um, I've no, I don't doubt there's a better way of waiting for a file to become available than to put it into that tight loop. Um, uh, yeah, we could we could add in a sleep or something in there, but it's probably not a very Python way of doing it. There's probably a better way of, of monitoring a file system looking for a file to become available. Hmm. But at the moment, I'm just interested in whether the process itself is working. Uh, I'm not too concerned about making it Pythonic and, and sort of... Uh, at the moment, Python is just more convenient than using Bash. Uh, Bash is a bit of a uh, an awkward language for doing certain things in. Um, I'd kind of liked to have worked out how to do it all in JQ, so I may actually revisit it. And, and take a look at that because again it's one of those niggling things where you think eh, there must be a way of doing it uh, in JQ uh, yeah, that is to say merging the server defaults with all of the server uh, server blocks to produce a uh, consolidated you know, a, a, as the server should be um, anyway yeah. It's, uh, again, um, I'm more concerned with the bloody thing working than I am with making it the best way ever of doing something. This is something that fr frustrates me endlessly. Uh, yes, uh, you know, if I'm doing something day in, day out, then I will spend time and refine it. Uh, but there's no point in refining this uh, you know, once it's good enough that it works, you might as well leave it. Um, it's not something we're going to be running every five minutes once it's set up. Uh, sure, uh, we might revisit it. If, for example, we end up creating 20 different servers, we might find this isn't very efficient. Uh, and then we'll look at alternatives. Uh, it's not the end of the world to revisit one of these scripts and say, well, is actually a better way of doing it. Uh, you know, don't let don't let your drive for perfection. And believe me, I've fallen victim to this more often in my career than I care to mention. But don't let your you know your drive for perfection um, get in the way of good enough. Uh, you know, good enough is generally okay. Uh, uh, particularly, as I say, for these things that are not going to be run very often. Um, it's better to hack something together. Um, it's, a, it's a bit like uh, when we were over here, um, uh, and, and this programmatic way uh, of doing our uh, server construction. Yeah. So it's, it, the data on the right is driving the code on the left uh, it's when you look at that you kind of go oh that's a bit of an overkill for two servers you know I mean, it's not not really necessary um, it, it seems excessive uh, but I do expect this system to have more than two servers eventually uh, because I'm going to build a load of little niche, niche servers um, for, for doing various things uh, that will eventually go on the LAN1 network, so we will need to emulate them. Uh, but uh, it's something I've done before. It's quite a nice way of doing it because uh, you know once you've got it set up, it's it's very easy to add another server. We just add it to this server block on the right. Why am I pointing? You can't see that, can you? Uh, so. You know, to add another server, I just another add another one of these server blocks here, uh, and that's it. Uh, the server will simply start. Uh, 
uh, all of the configuration is going to be done somewhere else anyway. And if you decided you, you, you didn't want to use salt, you wanted to use some other uh, system, then the majority of this would still be okay. Uh, you obviously wouldn't bother with the salt options, and when you were doing the construction, you wouldn't bother installing salt. Uh, if you wanted to use a one of the serverless, uh, uh, sorry, one of the agentless systems, uh, or indeed use salt agentless, uh, which is also a possibility, uh, you just remove the lines which install salt. On the master, you install whatever it is you want to install, uh, and the rest of it works the same way. Overkill? Mm. I, it, again, you, you can make a case for the Vagrant file just being a, a bare Vagrant file, and just using you know, config.vm define, and just, just making those blocks vanilla. Mm. But I prefer uh, I'll throw it this way, I think. Um, yeah. But if I was only doing one server, uh, I wouldn't bother. Um, if, uh, uh, and, and, and for two, it's kind of a bit overkill. Uh, but once you get more than two servers, I, I would say that this is probably a good way of doing it. If your servers are pretty standardized as they are in this particular context. Uh, right, what else should we do while we're waiting for that to cook? Um, uh, by the way, once this is run, uh, we can actually go into a, a tight loop of debugging this um, Python script. Ooh, there we go. Right, now what we want to know is did it? Uh, let's, uh, did it accept the keys? Uh, did it foobar? Uh, Okay, so it hasn't accepted the keys, so evidently something didn't work. So let's go to temp uh, hmm. uh, now did it? Do, did it clear things up? Uh, maybe I need to add something in to stop it from clearing that up. Uh, I didn't think it did. But... Guess it's the weekend accomplices by blah blah blah. Uh, Okay. Doesn't seem to have run this. Uh, 
Yeah, a piece of Ruby code, so... Okay, let's exit that and do pigment up server just do the provision so zero zero. Right, so that's the shell. Okay. It's not copying up the Okay, so that is not running. We suggest that name is not being set to serve zero zero one. Uh, It is. Uh, which means that our equality is not. I don't really need to do the provision, do I? I could, I could have just done a validate to get this out. But... Ah, right, okay. So why doesn't name equal server 01? What have I misunderstood? Oh, Ruby. Ruby equals... A string. I guess there's a dot equals or something. Oh, that's why test string equality. Ah, oh, okay. Doing either da da equals da da or da da query da da are equivalent. So, Uh, 
What am I doing wrong? SRV001. SRV002. Name equals SRV001. Why is that, why is that wrong? Uh, is, is it something to do with single quotes? A single quotes like a char array or something? Nope, so it's nothing to do with that. Let's try doing it the other way. Mm. Dot equal query. Okay, I don't get it. I'm obviously missing something. That's Python. Come on, Python. That's because you are an idiot.
whatever. explain everything right okay so um, what we need to do is uh, it would help if you stop being a bloody idiot as well same thing. Okay. Alright, 
Oh, for those of you following along at home, uh, because I had loaded with uh, with the symbolize true uh, at the top here, uh, the symbolized names, what was happening was the server one was being loaded as a symbol, not as a string. Uh, a string apparently can never equal a symbol. Who knew? Uh, so what you have to do is you either have to, as I have done here, uh, test for equality using a symbol, or you have to convert the symbol to a string and then test for equality. Uh, however, that seems to now have done what I expected. Let's uh, log in and see what's what. Mm. Okay, so it hasn't accepted the keys yet, which means it didn't work, but we should now have uh, so if we run main. And we get a syntax error in my Python, so not is not a keyword in Python. Boss. Okay. Oh. Uh, I assume then that uh, has to say not. Uh, file or directory blah 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 uh, right well there wouldn't be would there because that's being run in the same context And that looks very stuck to me. Mm, right. Well, it's obviously getting stuck in that loop there. is pretty
Right, now it seems to at least be working in principle. So, uh, there's a couple of things need to be changed. Uh, actually, one of the things that I ought to do... Definitive. Uh, uh, so that should be Okay, so that script basically works. Um, it's it's a bit of a dog's breakfast. Uh, let's see whether there's a more subtle way of doing that. Uh, so Python uh, wait for file. Uh, check and wait until a file exists. Oop. Uh, yeah, okay, so they put a time sleep in. But, um, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, right, so uh, long and short is uh, okay. So uh, long and short is that the, the recommended solution is pretty much what I've already got. Um,
Uh, so let's just uh, oh, we'll, we'll add in the time. Uh, Not in the time thing, because that's... Rather than going to a crazy... I'll sleep for five seconds. Uh, And now, do we want to quit after a certain number of attempts? Uh, uh. I suppose we do really, don't we? Um, right, let's change these variable names a bit. Just to give ourselves. Uh, so this will be... Uh, this will be... Um, servers. Install underscore data. No, let's just call it data, which is not a good name, but um, That's defaults. That's servers. Uh, this is a server name. He's in. The server's keys. So this is default. This is the minion ID as a term. It's not being held by stupid. <laughs> Sorry, don't disturb your sleep. Right.
Right, I think that reads a lot better than you can. Mm. Okay, so we load the data, we get the defaults, we extract the servers, and then for each server name, we merge the defaults with the servers information. We construct the mean ID. We see if the file is available already. If it is, we know it's been accepted. If not, we go into that loop and wait for it and then spawn out and just run the salt key acceptance. So the only decision now is do we or do we not limit it in its, the amount of time that it's going to wait? Well, it's running in the background anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. The only problem is that it, as it's written, uh, it will stall on a particular million ID if it gets stuck. Uh, whereas what we'd ideally like it to do is skip over it and come back to it. Uh, uh, so what we could do is say uh, if the file is not in the already accepted keys and if it's If it is in the pre, then run that command. Go back, try again. Uh, so we, uh, what, what we could do uh, is re-engineer this somewhat. So we could give it a list of keys, uh, sorry, a list of million IDs, and then we keep going over that list of million IDs until they've all been accepted. Um, which we could do by just looping around. Every time the key is accepted, we add it to an empty list. One of those two lists of the same length, we've accepted them all. I guess that would do. Oh, Kenny, honestly. Hey, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know you're only licking your foot, but people will get the wrong idea, you know. And a poor boy. But we'll, we'll leave it as it is for the time being. Because mm. uh, it's such a small, such a small thing. Right, let's... Uh, let's check it out. It should all be okay, but I think it's using the old version of the script. Uh, so, sort key minus L. Boom, all accepted. Nice. And if we look at uh, um, uh, yeah, it's the old one. So I suppose what we could do is run it all again with the new sexy version. Uh, uh, well, let's at least do that. Um, and that's not going to help, is it? Uh, provision. Uh, at least this will uh, test the uh, the syntax is right. Oh, it's getting close to dinner time, that's why you're fidgeting. Hmm? Mm, is that why you're fidgeting? Right. Now, given how tired I am, I'm amazed I've made it through the whole two hours. 
Mm. I can really do with a kit. <laughs> because somebody, and I'm not pointing any fingers, called me up early today, didn't you? Mm. Nice. <laughs> right. Mm. You're not helping. Um, main. Boom. Okay, so I think it's reasonable to assume that everything's right. So we can get rid of except minions because we don't need that anymore. And I think we're good to go. So let's uh, uh, let's just quit out there. Uh, Okay, so da, 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 da. Uh, good, 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 good. All right, so we don't want that one. Uh, but we do want everything else, don't we? Uh, Vagrant ad. What are you doing, you psycho? Git ad. I have to say, I'm not sure what, which I'm more insane for. <clears throat> talking to you or talking to myself? Right. That looks good to me. Uh, now then, what would be nice would be to run my pipe over that script uh, having put some uh, types together but I can't be bothered because it's such a tiny script who cares mm -hmm. who cares mm -hmm. we could have done all sorts of things we could put functions in there and we could put names and variables but like I said it's basically just one function so uh, we'll leave it as is. So let's commit that. And uh, what shall we say we did? Um, well, for the most part, uh, well, actually, that's a bloody good point, actually, Mark. Um, uh, I think. Oh. Uh, Uh, that's the only difference, is it? So what the hell did we change in the in the variable in the? Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I think you do this deliberately. Uh, what did we do? We took. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so get commit. It is just a couple of small changes. Uh, so uh, wait, uh, uh, auto rate initial minion key acceptance. That's really it, isn't it? There's nothing else to it. really ought to add to all of our streams the details of where people can get that mm -hmm. and we ought to make a really quick uh, intro right I think that that's it for now well, the next step is to uh, Uh, yeah, the next step is to add some orchestration, which we'll do probably Wednesday. Tomorrow, the bonus stream we might do something completely different. Uh, I'll either go back to the Raspberry Pi stuff, or 
do something very different. Right, okay, anyway, for today, that'll do. Let's go and get you some dinner. <laughs>